Hey folks, it's Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be episode 12 of the weekly series, Lies and Half-Truths of the Bible. Let's start off with some preliminary stuff. This video series is for people who want to deprogram their mind from all the nonsense they've been exposed to from the Bible and Christianity. So basically, this ain't for Christians. This is, our, this is only for Christians who really want to test their faith. Or Christians who want to be deprogrammed and want to come in back to reality with the rest of humanity. Okay. And if you start leaving that dumbass Christian comments on there, I'm probably going to block you. Because I don't want to hear nothing about what you think you think you know. I want to know what people know they know from direct experience. Not some BS you've been hearing from your church or your minister, blah, blah, blah. So basically, if you're a Christian, you want to stay on this thing? Zip it. Don't want to hear from you. Done heard enough from you all my life. Don't want to hear from you. Stay the hell off my. Stay the hell off the comments, or I will block you. Simple. Okay. Another preliminary stuff. When something gets out of harmony, something else will oppose it. So you know, most of us are not Democrats, or Republican. Really, at the core, most of us got common sense. We're sort of in the middle. But people make us think we're one or the other. So. Once you have a Democrat, you got to have a Republican. Once you have a Republican, you have to have a Democrat because that's just, you have to keep that balance going. Where if you just had people who try to make good decisions based on the circumstances, you wouldn't have Democrat and Republican. You'd have, you know, just have middle of the road people. But, you know, the world tries to divide you, this egotistical divide. Anyway. Okay. Last week we talked about Luke twelve fifty one, which is, Do you suppose that I come to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. And I pointed out this is nothing but divisive ego speak, and again, proves that Jesus isn't God, and it also proves that you really shouldn't be listening to the Bible, you shouldn't be giving the Bible that much respect. Okay, this week we will be talking about 1 John 4, 3, which is, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard of, was coming and is now already in the world. So, you know, Jesus enters the world. He's being all self-centered and egotistical, like the statement I just read, causing trouble. So guess what happens? He's out of harmony. Something else has to come and balance him out, which he's the Christ. This is the Antichrist. They balance each other out. So as soon as he started doing his thing, or shortly afterwards, the Antichrist is already already happening. You know what I mean? And they make it sound like, oh, it's the end of the world, the Antichrist. No, the Antichrist began the, be the moment Christ began, pretty much. So, I mean, you know, it's ridiculous thinking again from small-minded people who are just flat-ass stupid and e just flat-ass stupid and basically just gullible. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah, okay, if Jesus would have been right on everything he said or been in harmony with it, he wouldn't have had any opposition. It's hard to oppose harmony. How do you oppose harmony? It's hard. You know, you just got to be plain ass dumb. You know, like we said on the Democrat and Republican, once you have one, you're going to have the other. I mean, think about it. What opposes good? Evil. What opposes evil? Good. I mean, it's just, once you have one, you have to have the other. But if you just move past that, you don't have the opposites. If you just focus on harmony, you don't really get opposed that much. Okay. Okay, yeah. Now, if you don't preach a bunch of nonsense, you're not going to be able to post. Okay, and and again, there is... There being an antichrist. Okay, again, there being an antichrist just validates that Jesus isn't God because Jesus is not in harmony. If Jesus has been in complete harmony, you know, he may be able to sell me on that. And if he really wanted to sell me on it, he wouldn't even claim it. He would just do what he's doing. And now I'd say, man, that guy might be God, which I know better because I know it can't be. You know, God is singular. And there's, there's, once you understand that everything is energy, that is God, and everything else is an illusion, you sort of get it and you know that no man can be God because it, 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 the, the part that's God, you can't really, you have to fathom it. You can't sense it with your five senses directly. Again, God has no opposites. Again, this points to the fact that Jesus isn't God. He's just full of himself. Basically, Jesus was a radical who did some cool things, but in total, he was an idiot who died on the cross for his own sins. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, I think really what they should have done instead of hung, you know, put him on the cross, I think basically, you know, what we'd have done out here in the country just give him a good ass kicking, you know, if he'd have repeated the talking how much he's got, just give him another ass kicking. Just give him, keep giving him ass kickings until he realizes, you know what, I think I'm going to give up on this God thing because, you know what, my jaw's been broken 15 times. I think I'm just going to give it up. 
Okay. Next week, we will be talking about how the Bible violates basic scientific and natural principles. And so, you know, I, it's, I don't have a specific verse I'm going to talk about. However, that's what I want to do. I just sort of want to... And I, and I sort of see this series starting to come, not to an end, but starting to become more ad hoc. And when I say ad hoc, as... Because when I first started this series, I did it because I was frustrated with all the ignorance I've been piling up on me, you know, from, from childhood up, you know, all this Christian crap I've been piling And I feel like this series has allowed me to unleash and vent my frustrations. And I really feel sort of clean on the issue. I feel like I've vented, and I'm like I say, I'm more of a positive person, and this is sort of more negative, really, in general. And I sort of view it like a garden. You know, you go out, you plow the ground up a little bit, you plant your seeds in, they start growing, but what starts growing with the plants? The weeds. So then you have to get out there and weed a little bit to make sure your plants grow. And really, the, the, the purpose of a garden is to get vegetables and food you can eat from it, not to, not to pull up weeds or kill bugs, even though killing bugs and weeding is part of the process for a lot of people in their gardens. And so that's why I, I view this Bible series as weeding. I'm weeding at, because I've got a lot of positive stuff I want to do. i got a lot of things I want to talk about that people really haven't talked about or thought about. And those things are a lot more interesting than this. This, to me, is, you know, occasionally when a Christian does something ignorant, I'm like, you know what, or I'm just like, you know what, i got to address that. Or I'm walking along and something hits me that I never really considered that's like, oh, that's a good point. I need to point that out on the Bible. That proves it's wrong again. So I'm starting to see that this is going to be more ad hoc or... Basically, it's sort of, uh, as Christians piss me off, I'll probably come out here to vent. This is almost more of a venting and uh, that kind of thing than really um, something positive I want to do. So, I, like I say, I'll do one next week, and then I think it's going to be sort of ad hoc. And when I say ad hoc, it's, I, I can see it probably being more once a month or just, you know, as needed to for me to vent and get out my frustrations. And, you know, if you... If some Christian did something ignorant to you during the, you know, between my last videos, you know, once this thing starts going ad hoc, if some Christian does something irritate, irritating to piss you off and you they quote some verse to you and you want you say, hey, do do one on this because it helped me vent to hear you vent on that specific verse, then, you know, I may do that. And give me a little bit of story. Make me feel it. Make me feel motivated. Say, yeah, I want to do that because I want to point out, I want to give this person the, the, the ability to defend themselves against that ignorance. So... I sort of see that being the future of it. Like I said, I've got a lot of positive things I want to do, and this sort of is taking up time for that. So, like again, I, this is going to be more ad hoc. Okay. If you would like to know more about Fawn the Way of Growth, click the link in the information section video. And it's on this side. Oh, and one thing, too. This Antichrist thing, it just points out it's a violation of Principle 8 in Fawn the Way of Growth, which is seek harmony and peace. If he'd been seeking harmony, he wouldn't have had opposition or not any real opposition for very long. So, you know, it's just, again, violations of those nine principles. It just screws your life up and get you hurt. If you want to watch last week's episode, click the video in the video response section. If you want to watch all episodes, watch you can click the playlist that just popped up and go to that and watch it. Please rate until next week where we're going to be talking about how Christianity violates scientific and natural principles. Later.